Hello and welcome to this video with tips and tricks from the Student Affairs Committee on giving a virtual presentation. This talk was prepared by Student Affairs Committee members Aditi Dubé, Lena Bernaola, and myself, Meredith Spenspolio. Now, as you're likely aware, this year's ESA annual meeting will be fully virtual. There are two types of presentations that will happen during this virtual meeting. There are presentations in on-demand symposia, which as the name suggests, will be pre-recorded and available to access anytime between November 11th and November 25th. And there are live stream symposia. Uh, in these symposia, there are talks that will be happening live, but there's also an option for speakers to pre-record their talks and upload, and the talks will then be streamed during the live symposia. Uh, these live stream symposia will be happening between November 16th and November 19th, which is when the annual meeting was originally scheduled. Now during this talk, we'll be giving tips for both types of uh, presentations. If we are talking specifically about on-demand uh, presentations, there'll be this yellow circle in the top right corner. If we're talking specifically about live stream presentations, there will be this blue circle in the top right corner. And if we're talking about tips that are applicable to both types of presentations, we'll have both circles in that top right corner. Now, a lot of giving a virtual talk is the same as giving an in-person talk, but there are some important differences, specifically during the planning stage. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that you have the right equipment to give a good virtual talk. Uh, this boils down to mainly having a good microphone and good internet access. Uh, you don't always have to have an outside microphone. A lot of the built-in microphones at computers work perfectly fine. I'm using a built-in microphone now. But if you test out your audio and find that it's not as good as you'd like with the built-in microphone, you can always look for an outside microphone. Uh, lapel microphones, like this one uh, pictured here, are pretty accessible and affordable. Uh, but if you're looking to really upgrade your audio output, you can also look at getting a shotgun microphone, uh, such as this one here. These are excellent because they are directional, so if you have the mic facing you, it'll pick up mainly you and minimize sound that's coming from the sides and behind the microphone. So it's really good for um, honing in on your voice and making it really good audio quality. Probably most importantly, you wanna make sure you have a good internet connection. And this is particularly vital if you're giving a live talk. Uh, there are websites where you can test your internet speed and I recommend doing that before uh, going into your live presentation. Another unique thing about giving a virtual talk is the staging process. So obviously you'll be giving this talk from either your home or your office or some other location that's not a conference venue. Uh, so you have to think about what's around you and what's behind you and accessible in the screen because people will be able to see what's behind you if you're opting to use a camera during these talks. So some tips that you can think about when thinking about staging are to avoid recording in front of a blank wall. Uh, particularly if it's a white wall. Nothing wrong with white walls, but they can be a little bit sterile if there's nothing else in the screen. Uh, so you can think about hanging a picture behind you or having a plant or some other item of interest, or you could also use a virtual background if your computer allows that. Uh, virtual backgrounds are great for livening up a sterile background, but also for disguising a distracting background, um, whether that's people walking around or just something behind you that you don't want people to see. If you do opt to use a virtual background, just make sure that it's not distracting and that it's professional. Another thing you wanna think about is lighting. You wanna make sure that you are well lit so people can see you as you present your talk. Uh, this involves making sure that the lighting is in front of you, so don't record with a lamp or a bright window behind you as that'll cast a shadow on you and make it difficult to see you while you're presenting. You also wanna make sure that your camera is either at or just slightly above eye level. If you're using the built-in camera for your computer, it's likely that in the normal setup, it'll be a little bit below your eye level. Uh, but this gives the appearance of looking down on your audience. So you don't wanna do that. An easy way to fix it is to stack a couple books under your computer. So it just raises it up a couple inches so that it's at your eye level. Finally, you wanna avoid loud environments. I know this isn't always possible. Uh, you can't always predict when a dog is gonna bark or when an ambulance is going to drive by. But set yourself up for success by choosing an environment that's typically pretty quiet. And if you have any housemates, letting them know the window that you're planning to either record or present so that they know not to disturb you during that period. Thinking about your slides, uh, these are things that you should be thinking about for in-person presentations as well. 
Um, but particularly in the virtual environment, it's important because people may be viewing things on a small screen or either your or the audience member's internet connection may make the uh, video quality a little less than ideal. Uh, so make sure that your text and your images are balanced on the slide and that there's large fonts people can see even if the quality is a little poor. Use subtle backgrounds that have colors that are highly contrasting with either your text or your images. So basically you can see easily what's on your slide. And keep the slides simple. You may also consider using social media icons to let people know whether your presentation is shareable. ESA has provided these icons over here about whether photography is okay and whether sharing that is okay on social media. This may be particularly important in the virtual environment because it's very easy to take a screenshot and upload that to Twitter. Um, so letting the audience know whether you're okay with that can be really important. Now all on-demand talks um, will be recorded, obviously, and this is going to be all of the 10-minute presentations. So that's all of the student talks and some of the other symposia as well. Now, when you go to record, it's important to note that animations and videos will not play in the uploaded file. So avoid these because they won't be able to be accessed by the people viewing your presentation. You also want to use the 16 to 9 aspect ratio or the widescreen slides to maximize the amount of space available to you. And since it's being recorded, it's also important to note that you have the opportunity to re-record your audio. So if you're not pleased with your first take, you can always do it again. This is excellent because it can help you uh, smooth out rough patches that you didn't know you had in your presentation if you're giving it for the first time. Uh, but keep in mind that it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, talks that are over rehearsed can, all, can uh, actually seem a bit robotic and less engaging to the audience. Um, so know that you have the opportunity to record your presentation until you're happy with it, but don't let that stop you from uh, recording and uploading and finishing your presentation. With the recording software that ESA is recommending that you use, uh, the vocal recordings will belong to each slide. So if you change any content on your slide, it's important to go back and listen to your audio recording and make sure that your audio recording still matches what's going on in your slide. Now going along with that, if you change the number of slides in your presentation, you will need to upload an entirely new slide deck and re-record the audio from the beginning. Uh, so give yourself enough time to uh, do that if you're going to be making any changes to your slides, especially if they affect the total number of slides. Going along with that, make sure you don't wait until the last minute to upload your presentations and record your audio. You want to make sure you're giving yourself enough time to get familiar with the software, make sure you're happy with your slides, and make sure that you're happy with your audio presentation. Now for the live stream symposia, as I mentioned, there's an option to pre-record and upload that presentation. If you're doing that, a lot of the tips we've already talked about will apply equally well. But even if you are doing the actual live talk and presenting live, uh, you want to make sure that you're not waiting until the last minute to upload your slides because those do need to be uploaded in advance, so be prepared to do that. And also be ready in advance to actually present. You want to be ready when the moderator says that it's your time. And you want to make sure that you've rehearsed your talk enough to make sure that you have time to work your slides during your allotted time slot. So essentially make sure that you're prepared regardless of whether you're pre-recording or uh, giving a presentation live. Now, as far as actually presenting, there are a lot of tips that would work equally well for an in-person talk. Uh, but the virtual environment's a little bit different because you don't have an audience to uh, get reactions from and kind of feed off of. Uh, but something that you can do is still try to make eye contact with your audience. Uh, obviously, there aren't people in the room with you, but your eye contact is actually looking at your camera. So try to look at your camera rather than your slides the entire time. I know that this is awkward at first and difficult to do, but it really does help engage the audience. Um, and it's something that you can get more comfortable with with practice. As far as delivery, it's important to note that if you're using a camera, you should have a professional appearance like you would at an in-person conference. Uh, there's not a single definition of what a professional appearance is in our field, and how you dress and present yourself is a very personal decision. Uh, but a good rule of thumb to use is to wear and present yourself um, in a way that makes you feel confident but comfortable and ready to interact with colleagues in a professional environment. 
You may want to consider practice or even delivering your speech while standing. Uh, a lot of us are sitting while we're working from home. Uh, but you tend to have better breathing patterns, um, better voice projection, and more normal speech stops as well when you're standing. So you may want to consider uh, having a standing desk set up for either recording or presenting your talk. If you're someone that talks with your hands like I do, feel free to do that. Set up your camera to where your torso is framed so you can get your hands into the screen if you'd like to emphasize the point. Um, but don't move your hands too much because that can be distracting in the virtual environment. Specifically for the virtual presentations, you may want to speak slower than you normally would in person. This helps with clarity because audio quality may not be as great as it would be in person. So make sure that you're enunciating and speaking intentionally during your presentation. You also want to talk about the images on your slides to help those with either low vision or blindness. Uh, essentially, if people are having trouble viewing your slides um, for any reason, you want to make sure that they can still take away the key points from your talk. So make sure that you're talking through all graphs and figures really well. And probably most importantly, you want to practice virtually with a friend before uploading or live streaming your presentation. This will help with general preparedness, but it's also super important for the virtual environment to help you uh, troubleshoot any technical issues beforehand, whether that's with a microphone or an internet connection or something else. Now, there are a bunch of other resources on the ESA website. If you go to insoch.org slash events slash annual dash meeting slash resources. You'll see a page like this that has presenter information, which has some uh, technical tips for recording, which we've gone over some of those. There's also presenter tips for engaging with a virtual audience, which is here, um, which we've gone over a lot of those tips as well. But particularly for the student competition talks, I wanted to point people to this tab here, student competition judges information. If you click that, it'll take you to a page where you can find resources for judges and the 10 minute paper evaluation form. Now this is great because it gives you all of the criteria that the judges are looking for in these presentations. And particularly when we're in a virtual environment, you can record multiple times to make sure you're hitting all those key points. Uh, so checking out this evaluation form in advance, reviewing it, making sure that you're filling all those criteria can help you give a better talk but can also help make sure that your talk is recognized for being a good talk. So check that out if you're part of the student competition symposium. Now we hope that this has been a useful presentation for you as you think about uh, preparing and recording or giving a virtual talk for the annual meeting. I'd like to acknowledge other people that contributed ideas for this video, including Student Affairs Committee members Annie Kruger, Tessa Shates, Katie Britt, and our ESA staff liaison, Cindy Myers. And with that, on behalf of the entire Student Affairs Committee, uh, we look forward to seeing you in November for the virtual annual meeting.